Hi, my name's Dan Keane. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Happy Piano Day week. I don't know if that's really a thing. Um, but anyway, I'm, this is the second video this week. If you haven't seen the first one, linked up above and down below, sharing a couple of pianos that I sampled for the community, one of which was for charity, the other which was for free via pianobook.co.uk. For this video, I thought I'd taste the chef's perk of being one of Spitfire Audio's composers. One of the great privileges with that is being able to play with some of these sample libraries before they've actually come out. And as a result, when I kind of sit and play with something for a while and I think, this could be a useful thing for a video. I can bank it away until the embargo has been lifted, until the product has come out, which in this case, the case of Mrs. Mills Piano, it is now out. Mrs. Mills Piano is part of the original series from Spitfire Audio, 29 pounds, very, very affordable, multiple mic positions, eight dynamic layers. And basically they went into Abbey Road Studio 2 and they recorded the sound of the piano that was famously played by Gladys Mills. It's got a very kind of Beatles nostalgia feel to it because it was played on a couple of tracks. Now I'm not gonna do the full sales pitch, but I'm just gonna quickly show you what each microphone sounds like. And then I'm gonna show you my hack for creating something that I think is very, very musical using Mrs. Mills piano. So this is the close mic, as you can hear, very, very bright. even in the quiet dynamics. So we know this sound well. Now if I show you what the room mic sound like. Equally sounds very, very nice. It's the sound of Studio 2. But finally, if I show you this, which is a D19 vintage mic. This is my favorite mic. It feels very direct, very punchy. Um, I think it says here, that it was placed above the strings in the middle of the piano. But as you can hear, it sounds very clear across the whole uh, key range. Now, I don't know if this is because of the distance that it was from the strings, or if it's more that this microphone just has a particular characteristic to it. But I thought I'd apply a little technique. So I'm gonna leave this as a reference and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna grab a vintage mic and I've got the tightness here at about 40%, which I think works best for this. I'm gonna pull the pedal noise down to 50% and then I'm going to duplicate this. So there we go, exactly the same. And I'm actually gonna put these into a summing stack now. So this is my Mrs. Mills hack. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to go in and set this to stereo pan. Oh, why is that orange? That's bizarre. So I'm gonna turn this all the way over to the left, turn this all the way over to the right. But if I now take this track and put it up by three, and then take the instrument and pull it down by three, we're gonna be accessing a different set of samples. So now, now that's quite loud, so let's pull this down by about 4 dB. Sounds very nice. Let's compare it with this. So we get the same brightness, we get the same attack, the same punch, but now we've got it in stereo. Now what I really like is that it doesn't feel too like it's down the middle. For some reason, maybe this is just from years of playing pianos like this, I'm expecting the high keys to sound more towards the right and the low keys to sound more towards the left, but it feels very balanced. Which I really, really like.
There's just another couple of things that I'm going to do that are going to help glue this together a little bit more. The first thing is reverb. And my favorite reverb at the moment is Cinematic Rooms. Did you like that? That's a $20 plugin. It's called Plug Search. You can thank me later. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to apply something that's very, very short, this back room preset. And it just sounds like a back room. I'm going to pull this down a bit so we've got a nice blend. Maybe just a little bit lower. I don't want to hear it too much. just want to help give it a sense of space, um, which it didn't have otherwise. This helps to make it feel like it's further back in the room. And another thing I'm going to add is this Sketch Cassette plugin, which is actually very, very cheap. And I just love the design of it. And I've got a little preset here called DK Glue which saturates it slightly, gives it a slightly more kind of, well, a cassette sound. Now this sounds really nice to my liking. If I now go back to the original. afford to bring the volume of this up again now. It's so difficult to volume match sometimes. Now there are a couple of other things that we can do just to help give it a little bit more space, a little bit more glue as well. Two sends. The first is this reverb, which again is another instance of the cinematic rooms. We're just tickling it with a very, very, very small amount. So it's really just kind of off in the distance. That's very, very subtle. I might actually pull it up a little bit more. And the other thing we can do is apply a technique called a rear bus. Now I got this from quite a well-known songwriter uh, who might be watching. So I'm, I'm using this set to mid and side mode. This is a CLA 76 by Waves. Basically, it applies a little bit of compression that helps to bring out the sides a little bit more than the mids. Um, so this actually works quite well just to blend in. So if I play with it. And without it. So again, you only want to tickle it slightly. See, that feels like too much. So that's just a little quick tip to help you get the most out of Mrs. Mills Piano. I should say that while I'm affiliated with Spitfire Audio, they don't know that I'm making this video. So this is purely for you, the community. Um, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already click like if you enjoyed and try and get some sunshine because we don't get it very often, but it's a lovely day. So I'm going to go out and enjoy it. See you next time.